It's Tozer. <laughs> Do we look alike? No. <laughs> oh well. You know, we are going to be made into the image of Christ, but I don't think that we're going to look exactly like Christ. Not with this nose. <laughs> But what God is going to do is make us conformed into the internal realization that God has a personality that he will bring out through us with our own unique distinctiveness that we will still be known for as we are, but maybe not who we think we are. And I find that very comforting. Because no offense, but you're probably just as much a turd as I am. <laughs> So thank God that we're being perfected and changed from glory to glory to the incorruptible image of His Son. And as we do that daily, examining His Word and hearing what God would speak to us each day, we find ourselves moved and comforted and strengthened in our inner man by what He says to us through our outer man. Through our ears we hear. And then as we think about it, we become attuned to the voice of God. And then one day He speaks to us direct. And we know it's Jesus. Christians drawn by this present world's charms. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are servants of corruption. For whom a man is overcome, for of whom a man is overcome, of the same is he brought in bondage. Second Peter two nineteen. When the Bible op with the Bible open before us, why do these feel like they're the wrong glasses? <laughs> Boy. Let's read this again. With the Bible open before us and a long tradition of truth behind us, there would seem to be no reason for this present tragic failure of Christians to recognize the world's deceptive appeal and to stay clear of it. For there must not be any denial of the facts. The church is being overwhelmed by the kingdoms of this world and the glory of them. That world, which our Savior once refused to buy at the price of disobedience to God, is now wooing his professed followers with every sly, deceptive artifice. The glory which our Lord once rejected with cold scorn is now being admired and sought after by multitudes who make a loud profession of accepting the gospel. The old trick which our Lord saw through so easily is charming his present-day followers into smiling acquiescence. The devil did not know Christ, but apparently he knows Christians. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, all have been Christianized, not by the liberal, mind you, but by the evangelicals, and now are offered along with Christ to everyone who will believe. Blind leaders of blind souls now insist that Christians should not cut themselves off from the pleasures of the world, so the very values that Christ scorned are now being used to attract people to the gospel. We stand in need of warning. In spite of prophetic voices that are raised here and there among us, present-day believers are being drawn to the world with irresistible force. You know, I'm amazed that Tozer brings that up because when I was saved in my day, Keith Green was someone who was famous and brought to us a message that we desired more than anything else to hear and to see and to apply to our life, and that was to love the Lord our God with all of our being and all of our might, and that because we were hippies at the time, we rejected a lot of what the world had to say because we saw through the lies and the deceptions and the agendas and the personifications of power that people thought that they were going to have once they got involved in committees and organizations and doing this or doing that or being a politician or getting into the Christian politicals arena or the Christian book sales, or the Christian worship media, or now, you know, we worship worship. We worship worship leaders. We worship pastors. We worship just about everything that the world has, because when we say American Idol, we think of, you know, wow, that's just a TV show. And yet, aren't they worshiping? And when we look at church, do we not go to the church with the best worship service? Do we not go in order to be entertained and to get our spiritual buzz on? In reality, Jesus said none of those things were God. Jesus said when you pray, go into your closet alone. But what do we do? The prayer chain? The prayer list? The prayer request? The laying on of hands? The elders? Standing in front of cameras? Speaking? Doing this as I share these things? Are they not all likewise 
personifications of the world and its ways? The answer is yes. And if you disagree, you're wrong. And this is the only one that will really give you a flat out no to say so. When you don't see that Christianity has now become the world, then you're lied to. You've been deceived by what Jesus said to forsake. Love not the world nor the things of the world. For the lust of the eye, the pride of life, the lust of the flesh, these are all they which tempt you to turn you away from God and to have you spend more time on your television and your sports scores and your fantasy leagues than they are to spend your time with knowing God and hearing His voice. And I'll challenge you with this. While you can hear your radio commentator and you can do your iPhones and you can have your favorite Christian worship leader and you can listen to your Christian radio and you can do all the Christian things, can you today say you heard God speak audibly to you today? If you can't, that's your problem. The world is in the way. If you want to hear God speak to you audibly, and I mean through your ears, you have to cut yourself off from the world. You have to deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow Jesus. There is no other way. Jesus would not give to his disciples that which was unholy, and he would not cast his pearls before swine. But rather what he did was he took them to a place where there were thousands and tens of thousands following him until he said, eat my flesh, drink my blood. If you do not, you cannot be my disciple. And guess what happened? They left. They walked away. And Jesus looked at his twelve and he said, will you walk away? Peter in his famous line said, you know, where will we go? Your choice really is to find that place where you may be in the world but not of it. And I can say this, that the majority, and I'll say 99% of the majority of evangelical Christianity, whether it be from a Calvary Chapel or whether it be from a Billy Graham, has allowed the world in it. And we all have compromise that we say by grace we're able to hold on to and do. But when Jesus comes back, he said an interesting statement. Even though we know that the book of Revelation talks about one church out of seven being prepared for the Lord's return, he said something else that was very interesting. He said, when the Son of Man returns, will he find faith? If you read the Sermon on the Mount and you treat it as literal, literal, meaning he's saying what he means, it means what he says, because at the end of it, if you read the last few words, he said, these sayings of mine, blessed are you if you do them. It's a pretty hard message this morning. It's a pretty hard word to hear. But you can compromise because grace abounds so much so that it'll cover your sins and you'll be asking forgiveness for the times that you could have done more but in living in this world and choosing the way to walk with God would you rather be an Enoch or a Billy Graham the choice is yours for me I would rather say and I have heard Jesus speak because I gave up everything for it Will you, today, do the same? That's what Tozer is asking you. Believe it or not, that's what Jesus is asking you. And I can tell you this, the Father longs for you to do that. He really wants you to know Him.